Hey guys, it's Phase 1. Tony Z recently dropped a highly detailed video on Quantum, KSARS, and Virtual AI. Due to the density of this information, we will be covering these in three easy to consume parts. This is part 1. If you're new to this channel, we do all kinds of Star Citizen content, so make sure to subscribe for more and hit the bell notification button so that you don't miss out on future videos. I also stream on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So if you have any questions or if you like to just hang out, make sure to leave me a follow there as well. All my links are down below. And without any further ado, let's get started. For those that are new, Quantum is a simulation of the game universe. It dictates what missions are being offered, determines prices for commodities, and the amount of piracy and security in a given landing zone. It evolves the persistent universe over time. Quantum simulates hundreds of thousands of lightweight AI entities called quanta. Each quanta has a small list of attributes which determine its interaction with resources in the game world just like players do. This allows them to compete with real players. These attributes also determine how well they perform and how they perceive opportunities. Initially, quanta attributes fall under two main categories, proficiencies and traits. Proficiency acts as a multiplier on how well a quanta performs a given task. Different jobs will require different proficiencies. This means higher proficiencies equate to superior execution. Traits determine a quanta's preferences as it pertains to jobs. If a quanta's traits matches up to a specific job, they'll perceive that job as having a better payout. An example of this is if a quanta sees two jobs, one with low aggression like a factory job and the other way high aggression like a security job. If the quanta has an average aggression trait, he'll perceive both jobs as having equal payout. But if you decrease the quanta's aggression trait, the quanta will perceive the factory job as a better paying opportunity. Or if you increase the aggression trait, he will perceive the security job as a better paying opportunity. So now if you introduce another job related to piracy and add another trait such as morale, now the quanta having a higher aggression trait will perceive the pirate job as better if he has low morale or security if he has high morale. This is a small example on how quanta will behave in a game universe and they will be adding more traits and proficiencies this way quanta can make complex decisions based on their own preferences. This way the universe will have a balanced distribution of quanta in a way that makes sense. Since last Citizen Con, the quantum script has been rewritten from the slow TypeScript to C Sharp for better optimization. This allows them to catapult from a limitation of less than 10,000 quanta to potentially a million quanta. To assist in contextually interpreting the enormous amount of data quantum generates from the actions of players and NPCs, CIG has developed a web-based application called Odin. Odin will allow them to iterate on various combinations to achieve a desired result of what we'll eventually see as a live and thriving economy in the game universe. Odin allows them to analyze complex scenarios such as investigating what may have caused a price hike in a certain sector of a star system or even what caused a particular resource to be mined out a lot quickly in comparison to others. They also developed a data analysis tool called the Lizay Graph. This allows them to have a high level view of the flow of goods and services. This is used to assist in identifying economical issues within the game world in order to determine potential solutions. Along with Quanta, players' actions are also fed back into Quantum. Odin is able to analyze this information. In this example, Odin is able to contextually display a heat map of the PvP crime activity in a particular star system. If a particular area is meant to be secure and becomes too dangerous, then more turrets and security can be added. The Odin analytical capabilities have proved very beneficial to the project as it allows them to analyze complex scenarios in an easy way. This enables CIG to make necessary adjustments to quantum in order to deliver a universe that makes sense. A great example of Odin's analytics is a display of areas where felons spend their time as well as where they spend their money. It can also display most popular mining sites and pinpoint the most popular resources being extracted. Odin is also connected to the mission system and can identify what types of missions are being accepted and where. Data like this is vital as it allows them to identify popular and unpopular missions, thus providing an insight on what types of missions to focus on. 
we find in gameplay currently in game is actually utilizing a few new backend services services such as jobs which will also utilize the cargo loading and unloading and repair and refuel and restock services the refining services currently in game is allowing the game servers to retrieve data such as refiners available processing capacity and price quotas moving forward gameplay features will gradually begin to utilize these services as they come online this means more persistence as we move forward In earlier iterations of Star Citizen Alpha 3.x, when NPCs would traverse to a planet to mine a resource, there wasn't anything in place to indicate where on the planet the NPC should be. Moving forward, due to the development of the resource services, through an API, Quantum is now able to retrieve this data, thus allowing it to identify resource depletion in a given area on a planetoid. The example shown here demonstrates this. A Quanta NPC explores a planet and finds a resource at a particular location. The Quantum then notifies its organization of its new findings. Now you'll see that the organization is now converging to this area to extract the resource. Over time, the resource will deplete and as you can see, the explorer finds another hotspot and the Quanta and its org will identify this and relocate to the new resource hotspot to continue extraction. During this entire process, the Quanta is also taking into account risk in this area as it pertains to piracy by players and other NPC orcs. Should the area become too dangerous, they may consider mining elsewhere or hiring security forces to assist. This type of dynamic gameplay is what we can expect in the future, since Quantum has now been integrated in most of the backend services. This integration will be shipped out incrementally in the future releases. The first commodities in which Quantum will begin to dictate their prices will be fuel and repair commodities. Along with this, Quantum will also be able to designate piracy, freighters, and security to specific areas when needed. Testing will be in small variations until the bugs and kinks are worked out. In addition, service beacons will also be added to Quantum. Since iCache is mostly complete, they will now focus on adding critical new services such as server meshing, NPC schedulers, and the virtual AI service. In the next video, we'll be diving into what virtual AI is and more. Let me know your thoughts on what we covered so far in the comments down below. If there's anything in this video that you like, make sure to leave a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe for more. I will see you on the next one.